friends today in this video we are going to discuss about crispr cas technique um, which is widely used as genome editing tool now how this process was uh, invented and how this crispr cas works to uh, repair a dna or to knock down a gene we are going to discuss about all these things in our next few slides so let us discuss about how this process was invented so this process was invented in bacterial cell as a immunity against bacteriophage so as we know that bacteriophage when they infect any prokaryotic cell they insert their nucleic acid material which is dna so what happens once this dna is injected into a bacterial cell there are several cas proteins such as cas1 cas2 they take this uh, genetic material and insert them into their crispr locus so here crispr comes into play and the cas protein is also a part of crispr system so as the name implies crispr what is this crispr crispr is clustered c stand for clustered r stand for regular interspaced short palindromic repeats so you can see this these are the repeats that are present and these repeats are palindromic and i know and i hope that you know the meaning of this uh, palindromic so suppose if there is a sequence which is a b c d and e so when i will say that this sequence is palindromic then you will find like this e d c b a okay so such sequence are said to be palindromic clustered means they are present uh, very close to each other you can see these are the spacer sequence and they are regularly present they, that means they are not continuous that means this uh, spacer region which are this part of this fast dna that has been incorporated into the bacterial cell these are the spacer sequence and this will help to uh, detect the fast dna so at first when this fast dna gets inserted cas1 and cas2 cleave this dna and insert them into the crispr locus that is present inside the bacterial cell and this sequence that has been inserted into the bacterial cell this sequence is known as spacer sequence and this sequence beside this sequence there are repeat sequence which are nothing but short palindromic repeats and this are this together with cas genes comprises the crispr locus so clustered means they are present very close to each other you can see several spacer regions several repeats are present very close to each other so they are clustered and repeat means they are palindromic repeats these repeats are palindromic in nature and i have shown you what is a palindromic sequence okay and interspaced means that they are present but within a certain space and regularly but not continuous that means there are certain spaces between this spacer region and they are continue and they are not continuous but they are regular in nature so what happens when this fast dna get inserted into the crispr locus of prokaryotic cell they get transcribed as crispr rna okay so this crispr rna is nothing but the transcription of this spacer part that has been incorporated here along with the repeat sequence the palindromic repeats so this crispr rna further gets modified or get processed to form a guide rna you can see here this guide rna and in this guide rna there are two things are present the one is the scaffold one scaffold sequence as well as this one this is the guide rna that will help the cas protein to dictate where it will go and bind to the fast dna so why the bacterial dna will incorporate fast dna at first the question comes that what is the purpose of incorporating this fast dna into the crispr locus of bacterial cell the purpose of uh, this incorporation of fast dna into the bacterial cell is that it want to remember that in further case if this infection comes again then we have this fast sequence and since this fast sequence will serve as a memory for bacterial cell to protect them against this fast dna so that's why they incorporate this bacterial dna into the crispr locus okay so this fast dna that you can see here this fast dna is 
incorporated to serve as a memory so that further infection when comes from a phage towards bacterial cell they will again use this sequence to degrade the DNA material of phage so this guide RNA plays a very important role as it contains the spacer sequence that will help the Cas9 protein to detect the specific sequence in the fast DNA and to degrade them ok so this guide RNA along with a Cas9 protein plays a very important role in this process so this is what happens when a foreign DNA enters into a prokaryotic cell and just like our body as a defense to foreign material they they take the antigen via endocytosis in an antigen presenting cell where they cleave them into small pieces and then they present along with MSC to the uh, T cells which can be TC cells or T helper cells or B cells so these are the very important things that is very very much similar to prokaryotic cell in terms of immunity this CRISPR system act as a immune defense for this prokaryotic cells against the uh, virus so what is this CRISPR system consist of the CRISPR system consists of this Cas9 protein the guide RNA as well as the DNA that is going to be edited so how do we employ this system to edit a uh, genome inside our body cells so basically what happens you have to design a guide RNA and this guide RNA will consist of certain things that is very very important and essential for this CRISPR Cas system to work the guides the guide RNA must consist of scaffold sequence okay so this one is a scaffold sequence which you can see here okay this this part this part is scaffold sequence and this help in the binding of Cas9 protein so Cas9 protein binds to this scaffold sequence okay and and this part this part of guide RNA which I have to you this one this this part is a special region that means it will contain that particular sequence that is going to be modified inside the genomic DNA so this sequence is designed in such a way that it is very much unique it is not present in any other region of our genome it should be very specific and should be present only once and this this is the target part where we are going to modify so this part is basically your spacer region okay and one more important thing that is a uh, PAM the protospecial associated motif PAM sequence are certain sequence that is specific for a Cas protein for a Cas protein to cleave the DNA this PAM sequence is very much important because this PAM sequence induces a change a conformational change in this Cas9 which exposes its two domain uh, such as HNH and C. these are the nucleus domain of Cas9 so they will only get exposed when the con when the conformational change will happen and this conformational change will only happen when there is a PAM sequence and dependent up upon which kind of Cas protein we are using uh, the PAM sequence also vary so it depends on the Cas9 protein from which bacterial cell we are using so in case of uh, we are Cas9 uh, we are uh, using it from Staphylococcus aureus the PAM sequence will be different and if we use from another bacterial cell the PAM sequence will be different so the PAM sequence vary from bacterial to bacteria and it depends on which type of bacteria we are using and that will depend which type of PAM sequence will be designated here so besides the PAM sequence is the target sequence where we are going to modify and then this cap, Cas9 binds to the scaffold part of gRNA now why does Cas9 does not itself go and bind to the genomic region the question is the genome always consists of your PAM sequence right so if the PAM sequence is present in the genomic DNA Cas9 can itself go uh, Cas9 can itself go and bind to this PAM sequence and when it will bind it will induce a conformational change that can allow it to cut uh, DNA because such PAM sequence usually consist of three bases okay and this three there is a high probability that these three bases can occur in multiple position in the DNA but why not uh, Cas9 is going and sitting there and start cleaving without the help of guide RNA first the cleaving will be non-specific and second Cas9 
does not cannot bind DNA until it binds to gRNA because when it binds to the guide RNA this guide RNA when it binds to this guide RNA then only in that case there is a conformational change which activate its DNA binding domain so until and unless it does not bind to this scaffold region of guide RNA it does not has the ability to bind to the DNA region so only it can bind to DNA when it can bind to guide RNA and guide RNA induces a conformational change in this Cas9 protein so once this conformational change take place in this Cas9 protein then only guide RNA as well as Cas9 can sit in the DNA and again when it sits in the DNA it will not start cleaving the DNA because at first this spacer region will bind to this uh, target region okay and the sequence must be complemented to each other because if this sequence gets mismatches with the target region in that case it will not bind properly and the Cas9 and guide RNA will get dissociated so it is very very important for this particular region particularly the 5 to 5 bases that is present next to PAM should be very very complemented to each other okay if this part this this in part of this PAM is not that not that much complementary it will not matter but the initial 5 to 10 bases 5 to 7 bases are very very important so this is how the CAS works the CRISPR system works so so let us suppose there is a portion of DNA and you want to edit you want to knock out a particular gene okay so uh, let us suppose this part of DNA you want to mutate or remove so you will design a spacer and that spacer must be complemented to this part okay this region so it should be complemented to this region and introduce this uh, uh, guide RNA template into uh, a vector a DNA sequence of this guide RNA into vector and inside the cell this vector will undergo transcription to form guide RNA okay and this guide RNA will consist of scaffold sequence as well as your target sequence that is going to be modified so this Cas9 protein along with the region to get modified will be inserted into CRISPR vector that is available commercially and then you transfect them into mammalian cell both Cas9 protein as well as your guide RNA will get transcribed as well as Cas9 protein will get translated and this will be transcribed only now this Cas9 protein will go and bind to this scaffold sequence as you can see in this figure to form a ribonucleoprotein complex so this is RNA and this one is Cas9 protein once they form this complex they will go and bind to the target region as it is shown in the figure so they have bind to this target sequence and you can see that a PAM sequence these three bases are the PAM sequence so binding of Cas9 to guide, uh, guide RNA activate its DNA binding property and when it once it binds to this DNA then again conformational changes occur that exposes it to nucleus domain HNH and root C so once they are exposed they will cleave they will create a double stranded break and this double stranded break inside the our inside our body cell is mostly get repaired by non homologous in joining repair system so in case of non homologous uh, repair system what happens which this this repair system is active in all phases of cell cycle g1 s g2 as well as m phase and so if if any kind of double strand break is occurring inside the DNA so most of the time about 90% of the time that is repaired by this non homologous int joining okay so what happens in this non homologous int joining either few bases are trimmed from the terminal side from this terminal side or few bases are added to this 
terminal side there are few proteins that are involved we are we will discuss about non homologous in joining in another lecture so just for your information what happens is that when a double stranded break is repaired by this non homologous in joining system in this in this case particularly few bases are added here or few bases gets deleted which will result to insertion this insertion of bases or which will lead to deletion of bases so when both of this phenomena will occur insertion or deletion both of them will lead to a change in gene composition right insertion or deletion can lead to either introduction of stop codon or will lead to a frame shift inside the dna whatever so as a result of which the gene will the composition of the basis of a gene will get altered which will lead to inactivation or non functional protein as a result of which you can do this um, knockout system using this crispr cas9 okay and to repair to repair this crispr cas system what you can again do is that when once you cleave this double stranded break once you introduce this double stranded break using this crispr cas9 and guide rna you can also insert a large copy of a uh, template dna that will direct the cleaved strand to undergo homologous recombination that means we are cutting that part of the dna which we want to modify right suppose th this is a cancerous cell and this particular portion con con contains your mutated mutative part okay this mutation is introduced in this part so you have designed a spacer rna and along with you know, this uh, crispr protein cas9 and this guide rna they will introduce cut here and once a double strand break is introduced here in that case what happen non homologous in joining can come but if you also supply a template dna which is containing a normal sequence inside the cell there is a sister chromatid is present but when you are introducing more and more uh, template dna that can serve as a donor strand to undergo recombination here so that the um, correct part can be introduced here in that case there is high chances that homology directed repair will occur so for this homology directed repair to occur you need to transfect also a large part of dna that is going to dictate this particular region which is been mutated to undergo recombination okay and also the beauty of this dna that you are going to introduce you should not introduce any kind of pam sequence here because just like this dna which contains mutated region the spacer sequence can also bind to the template dna which you are going to introduce inside the dna cell and if it contains this pam sequence then cas9 and guide rna can also sit here okay so try to remember do not incorporate pam sequence inside this template dna because once you introduce this this pam sequence inside this template dna then both cas9 and spacer will also start leaving your donor dna that is going to dictate the mutated part to get corrected okay so don't introduce any pam sequence there as pam sequence will lead to cleavage of the donor dna also so to in so to to in improve or to increase the chance of uh, homologous recombination try to transfect large large amount of this uh, template dna to repair the mutated part okay and don't put this pam sequence into this mutative part so but the efficiency of this homology directed repair is very very less almost 10% and it takes place uh, around uh, g2 or s phase so these are the very important thing okay so one more thing that i like to discuss in this crispr cas system so that is going that we will discuss in the next slide but this is how repair is done and that is how the knockdown was uh, knockout process was done okay and in this particular slide there is nothing but they are trying to improve the specificity of this crispr cas they have many off target activity sometimes the guide rna the special part of this guide rna which we have designed can also bind to the other part of dna so to improve the specificity what 
they have done they have started the use of two guide rna and a mutated cas9 in this cas9 they mutate one of the domain we have two domain right i have discussed that there it has two domain one is hnh and another is roof c both of them are nucleus domain so they dom uh, later suppose they have mutated this roof c domain and they are left with only one domain hnh so the beauty of this domain is that it will only cut this one part here and it will cut one part here now why they are using two separate cut to let's let us see that double stranded nick will only appear once they are located in close proximity that means if you want to modify a particular part of a genome suppose this part and you want only this part to get repair you want it to be very specific then what you will do you will design a guide rna with a mutated cas9 that will cleave one part here and that will cleave another part here since both of them are cutting at this region that means these two cas9 are very close to each other and they can generate a double standard cu cut very near to each other if this cut is only very near to each other then only the dna gets removed and if this dna gets removed and uh, again non homologous injoining or homologous di directed repair can occur but if these two cuts if these two cuts are occur at a very far far part then in that case what will happen only single stranded nick will generate here and one single stranded nick will generate here which is very very far that will not leads to recruitment of this non homologous injoining or homologous directed repair so in that case a uh, repair system will come that will seal the nick but such kind of knockout or homology directed repair will not occur so to increase the efficiency to increase the specificity of this crispr cas system a double guide rna and cas9 system is used so that a particular region that is going to be modified will be cut individually by this crispr cas9 system and only when they are in close proximity if they are working properly then they are going to cut at a very close proximal to each other and that will generate double stranded nick and will finally get repair so this is how this crispr cas system work and this is how the entire process is done so i hope you guys have understood the concept of this crispr cas9 system uh, thanks for watching this video